And welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. Won't be long before it's campaign time again. Well, that's right. And we want to bring to you today a, a young man that I don't think you've met before, perhaps. Uh, David Holt is going to join us and talk about what he has done in his uh, brief but very, uh, very interesting uh, life up to this point. And he's back in Oklahoma City, his home. We're going to find out what he's going to be doing in the upcoming campaign season. Absolutely. David Holt, a young man who works for me at, at City Hall and uh, is going to embark on a political career sooner rather than later. And I want to get David's opinions on some things and, and find out what he does in my office all day long. It's coming up today on The Verdict. <laughs> Everyday America uses clean burning natural gas instead of coal or oil is a day of victory for our environment. That's why Chesapeake chose to explore for natural gas exclusively, and we've never looked back. Because natural gas burns twice as clean as oil or coal, and reducing carbon emissions to combat potential global warming is every bit as urgent as cutting our dependence on energy imports. As America's number one driller of new gas wells, Chesapeake is moving fast to find untapped reserves of natural gas here at home. It's the right fuel for America's economy and the fuel for a clean air future. We just happen to be early to see it so clearly. Chesapeake, natural gas wins the day. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. And Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Very pleased today to have David Holt, the Chief of Staff for uh, the Mayor Mick Cornett at the City of Oklahoma City as our guest. He is a native of Oklahoma City. He was born and raised here. He was in, in high school a National Merit Scholar. Uh, did his undergraduate work at George Washington University. Uh, had a, uh, a brief but uh, almost spectacular career in Washington, working with some uh, very leaders in our uh, national government, with the Speaker of the House, with the President of the United States, and a number of Congress people. Uh, came back to uh, Oklahoma City and is now, as I say, Chief of Staff for the Mayor at the City of Oklahoma City, and we're sure glad you decided to come home. Well, uh, it's, it's been my pleasure, and well, thank welcome. you for having me on the show. I feel, I feel like I get to cross-examine him after all these years. <laughs> hey, you grew up in Oklahoma City at the age of 18, I assume, or, or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. You right. took off for Washington to go to college at George Washington University, wound up with some incredible opportunities in working in, uh, on Capitol Hill and then the White House. 
First of all, why did you go to Washington? What was it about GW that, that, uh, that made you want to pursue your education there? Uh, well, first of all, I was really interested in Washington, I guess for obvious reasons. I had a, an interest in public service. You were a political junkie as a kid. I, right. I like to say public service, but yeah, political <laughs> junkie, yes. And, uh, and then, you know, secondarily, uh, Ken alluded to being a National Merit Scholar. That opened some doors, and George Washington had a, uh, had a scholarship that was available uh, that covered. George Washington happens to be at this moment the most expensive university in America. So, <laughs> so getting part of it taken care of with a scholarship uh, was a big was a big factor in going out there. And then, um, how did you get your first job in uh, in government? Well, you know, I started um, rowing crew uh, as kind of my biggest uh, side thing during college, which is. Uh, you know, like like we're so used to now in Oklahoma City, yeah. but I'm one of the very few people probably that's actually experienced it, <laughs> uh, particularly in the Northeast. So I did that for a semester, um, but we were going to start practicing at five in the morning. And so uh, when we and so I decided then was the time to get an internship. <laughs> and uh, so I uh, just kind of walked into Ernest Hitzuk's office, who was of course our congressman from Oklahoma City, uh, from our neck of the woods, Northwest right. Oklahoma City, War Acres, Putnam City area. And I said, I'd like to be an intern. And, you know, summer internships in Washington are very competitive. Uh, academic year internships are wide open. There's no Oklahomans in Washington to come and intern. So I just walked in. Uh, actually, the staff assistant was Kyle Loveless, who came back himself <clears throat> and ran for the Senate last year uh, here in Oklahoma. But uh, he let me come in, and I started just working there. And then I did that for a year or so. And then I moved over to J.C. Watt's office. Uh, J.C. was fourth in uh, command in the House at the time. And I really became super intern in that position. I was probably the only intern on Capitol Hill with a parking spot. <laughs> and uh, so I, I mean, I was writing things. I was speaking on the record. I was, I was having a, a, a great, it was a great opportunity. Um, and that really afforded me the opportunity to work uh, in the speaker's office as my first real job. And what'd you uh, do there? Well, I, I started there even before uh, I had finished college. I had a couple AP credits. I was able to just take a couple night classes my last semester. And so uh, JC's office recommended me to the speaker in, I guess this would have been February of 01, so right after President and Bush. This is Speaker Hastert. Yes, I'm sorry, Speaker Dennis Hastert from Illinois. He is the uh, longest serving Republican speaker in, in United States history and, uh, of course, at this point, our last Republican speaker. And uh, I came in right after President Bush had been inaugurated and got this position um, working right outside the speaker's door in the U.S. Capitol. It was a, uh, it was certainly an entry-level position, but an entry-level at the center of the universe. I mean, it was a, uh, it was just, uh, just incredible, especially for a political junkie, as, uh, as the mayor said. Uh, you know, we looked out over the National Mall. My whole wife was um, world leaders. Uh, you know, I have a whole wall of pictures with me and, uh, you know, Ariel Sharon or Gerhard Schroeder. These are people who were, you know, uh, international heads of state at the time. And then, of course, all the political leaders at the time were the only people I interacted with. Uh, Trent Lott, uh, Dick Armey, Tom DeLay. Um, you know, and then, of course, you know, I, mean, I even met Bono while I was there. You know, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was an incredible experience uh, and I was only 21 and not even at the beginning of it out of college um, so that was great and then and of course um, it's always going to be an interesting time but then 9-11 happened uh, while I was still there and um, that made it uh, especially historic and I was able to be a fly on the wall during you know the reaction to that and of course that day was um, you know very strong memories that I'll never forget uh, you know they pulled a, the sergeant in arms who really is responsible for the security at the Capitol. He's the guy that says, Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States at the State of the Union. Well, he pulls us all into the conference room, and um, at this point, all that had happened was the attacks in New York. And uh, so we're all in there, and the phones were going crazy, so I walked out to go grab the phone, and, uh, and then five minutes later, everyone burst out of the room because someone had seen smoke uh, coming from the Pentagon, which you could see from from the Capitol, and I had looked out that window not 10 minutes before and had not seen it. So it had happened while we were in that meeting, and then it, chaos ensued at that point. Everybody kind of was every man for himself, and I was probably the last one to walk out of there and turned off the coffee maker and, you know, tried to, <laughs> tried to find my car, and, and then like idiots, we all stood outside expecting, you know, like we were going to watch a plane hit the Capitol, uh, but pretty soon uh, there was a uh, sonic boom. Um, which we thought was an explosion, but it was actually from fighter jets. And that was when I finally went home uh, to my wife, who I had proposed to, I think, mm -hmm. 10 days previous. So <laughs> and she thought I was 
uh, not in a safe place at and, that moment. And then how'd you get to the White House from there? Well, you know, at that point, it was kind of easy, you know, that, that just made sense. My big break was getting into the Speaker's office. Once you're there, you're sort of in the mix. And uh, I got the opportunity to go down to Legislative Affairs in the White House which is um, actually an office founded by an Oklahoman, Bryce Harlow, for uh, President Eisenhower in the 50s. And uh, it's kind of like the president's lobbyists. You, you represent the president uh, to the members of Congress. And so I worked with the House of Representatives, and I went down to the White House in May of 2002 uh, and stayed there for two years and uh, worked in the East Wing. And, um, you know, if, if the previous experience was surreal, this was even more so. And, you know, here I was, I was only five years removed from Putnam City North, and I'm working in the East Wing of the White House, and, you know, I'm, if I wanted to go walk by the Oval Office, it was certainly within my rights to do so. <laughs> and uh, if I needed to go to a meeting, I'd probably walk through the Rose Garden, and it was just, uh, it was just amazing. Uh, you just had to pinch yourself. But you also had a job to do. I mean, you couldn't, you weren't a tourist every yeah, day. <laughs> what did you do on a daily basis? Sure. Well, um, you know, it's, it's, they are lobbyists, you know, so in, in some sense, they're just, uh, we are just maintaining relationships with the members of Congress. Sometimes the things they need are, are extremely pedestrian. They might want a picture. Uh, they might need a tour, you know. Um, but you're, you're kind of doing those services so that when you come back to them and say, you know, we really need you to vote for this war authorization <laughs> against Iraq, that, yeah. that they're receptive and you have a relationship and they trust you. And, uh, and so, you know, it's kind of issue by issue. But while I was there, uh, we created the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, they passed a prescription drug benefit for Medicare. Uh, we did go to war with Iraq. Um, those were all uh, actions that required congressional approval. How many years were you there? Two years. Two years at the White House. Right? Yeah, and that's, and that's a pretty typical uh, stint. You know, people tend to, you're there from, you know, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. every day. You, you burn out uh, physically. <laughs> so, uh, so I, um, and I kind of had my eye uh, on coming back home, um, probably towards the latter end of that. We're going to get to a break. We're visiting with David Holt about uh, his, the first 30 years of, of David Holt's life. It's, it's quite a chronicle. You have to catch this on DVD at your next store. We'll be back after this. I'm Beulah Shavney and I'm an original member of the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps, and I'm Chickasaw. I worked at the Phoenix Indian Hospital for a year, and then there was the war. I felt like it was my duty I wanted in the Army, so I made it, got in. And it was a good feeling to put that uniform on. We were one of a kind that <laughs> started something and uh, finished it. To see these women go in today, they are really doing a great job. And I'm very proud to look back now and see that I was one of the first ones of the Army that went in. There is just something that stands out about Chickasaw women. They want to go as far as they can go and succeed. I've got to do my best because I'm Chickasaw. Home values are down in some states, but not in Oklahoma. Oklahoma's home values have increased 4.2% during the past 12 months. Unlike some states where home values have decreased as much as 20%. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. There may be real estate problems in some states, but there has never been a better time than now to buy or sell a home in Oklahoma. One of the most affordable states in the country, Oklahomans are buying and selling homes every day. And an Oklahoma Realtor can show you how. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come.
Welcome back to the set of the verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers and today's guest, David Holt. And we were visiting in uh, the first half of the show about your time in uh, Washington and growing up at Putnam City North. And you came back. What year was that that you came back to Oklahoma City? It would have been May of 2004. And uh, what did you come back for and what have you been doing since? Well, I sort of uh, always had this hankering to get back here. And, and now I had this incredible experience and I felt like I could use it back home. And so I kind of worked it out while I was still in Washington that I would run the president's re-election in Oklahoma, which <clears throat> was not a very difficult job. He won. <laughs> he won that, didn't you? Yeah, he, exactly. He carried yeah. Oklahoma in 04. <laughs> Just thanks, we, thanks to your work. We pulled it out. <laughs> uh, <A> tight race. <laughs> he won every county. And, uh, and again, uh, no thanks to me. But uh, it was a great experience and a great way to get back. Uh, my wife, Rachel, uh, who's from Philadelphia, we met in college. She came back, obviously, and uh, she went to school at OU Law at that point and uh, became a prosecutor here in Oklahoma County. Um, so I came back. I ran the president's reelection, served Senator Inhofe during that time also. And then when that was complete in November of 2004, I went to work for uh, then Lieutenant Governor Mary Fallon uh, at the Capitol and did that for a little bit of uh, a little, uh, little over a year. And then, uh, and then, and then you get your big break. Then, then finally, <laughs> all of that hard work paid off, and I got to go to City yeah. Hall and, uh, and work have with. Have to go on a diet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I tell him I'm still under warranty. I don't need, the, <laughs> I don't need all that. But well, what know. do you do in the mayor's office for those who don't know? I have some vague idea. <laughs> what, what, what do you tell people? Well, I think uh, the best way to describe what I do is that I'm kind of uh, um, your chief. Uh, facilitator, implementer, in some ways. I mean, obviously, uh, there's a lot of people who implement your vision uh, and the city's vision, but, um, but I'm kind of right there, you know, I'm right at your side. And, uh, and that can be as uh, grandiose as sitting around and talking about what MAPS 3 is, or that can be as mundane as, you know, I need to go reply to the email from the constituent angry about the pothole in front of their house. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean it's very uh, varied work. Um, but you make it fun, and uh, and we uh, fortunately we get along very well because uh, we would have to. We spend uh, an incredible amount of time with each other, probably more than we spend with our spouses. So. How do you interact <laughs> uh, with Jim Couch, city manager? Great. Uh, I mean, fantastic. Jim is. Um, people say this, uh, but you can't be said enough. I mean, he has to be the best city manager in the country, and he's. I hope I don't step on any toes by saying I think he's got to be the best city manager the city's ever had. He's certainly the longest serving now, which says something, I think, in and of itself. Um, he's a great manager, and we kind of have a pretty good little triangle here, I think, that um, because I'm often the go-between, not because they can't talk to each other, but I mean, you know, it's just sometimes it's just easier that way. Uh, you know, maybe I saw him on Monday, and then I'll see Jim on Tuesday, and I need to tell him something, and then he'll say, and then I'll see him on Wednesday and tell him something. Um, and uh, so I kind of am a a go between uh, between the two of them, and we're all sounding boards um, for each other. I think. Yeah. Well, let me change subjects. Mm -hmm. uh, you were thinking about doing something in District 30? <laughs> that's right. That's Senate right. District 30. That is that's right. Tell uh, our viewers about that. Sure. Well, Glenn Coffey is the current state senator from the 30th district. Uh, obviously, he has been uh, a shining star in Oklahoma Republican politics. Became the Senate president in the last couple years, but he is term limited. He cannot run again. And uh, into those big shoes, I would like to step. Um, the district is the basically the Putnam City School District. That's the way I describe it. Um, it's a mix of constituent. He lives in the in the 30th district. Grew up in that area, as did I. Uh, it's northwest Oklahoma City. Kind of starts down on 10th Street. Grabs a little bit of Bethany, a little bit of War Acres, a lot of northwest Oklahoma City, and then goes all the way up to Quail Creek uh, at uh, May and uh, 122nd, which is not. Um, in the Putnam City School District, but but all the rest of the district is west of Lake Hefner Parkway. Well, I know you've you've already encountered uh, you know potential voters. What do, what do people want to know from from someone who who says they want to be their state senator? I think, particularly at the legislative level, um, I think people want someone who's one of them. You know, and you'd be surprised how often there are people who run that sort of kind of come out of nowhere and don't really have a lot of roots in that community. And I think there is a sense of community in Northwest Oklahoma City, and I'm very much of it. I mean, I'm, uh, this to me is a very unique opportunity to represent the people and places that made me who I am. Um, it's an honor. And um, I think that that's a, gonna be a priority for the voters. Glenn and I actually went uh, to the same elementary school, middle school, and, and high school, which I think uh, says something. Howard Hendrick was the senator before Glenn 
and he went to, he went to Bethany, but I mean, you know, he's, that's all part of the same, uh, that same community. And I think that'll be very important. Obviously, it's a, um, yeah, I'm not making news here, it's a conservative Republican area. I mean, they're going to, uh, we're going to want a senator that uh, represent the, represents those values, and so I certainly uh, hear a lot about that. Too. What do you think of the pressing issues that you would like to address should you be fortunate enough to win? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, I mean, there are huge issues facing our state, and a lot of times uh, I think the legislature tends to get overwhelmed by our system um, and the enormity of those issues and kind of tinkers around the edges. Now, tort reform is not an example of that. That was, that was an example of really taking on a big issue and trying to address it in a comprehensive way. But um, I think we still have a lot of work to do in our core government functions, uh, infrastructure, uh, education. Um, and I think one thing I've learned at the city is if you focus on core government functions, you can do them very well. I think the state and certainly the federal level uh, tends to do a thousand things poorly instead of ten things very well. And uh, I think that's why the city has such a great reputation for services. Um, I'd like to bring that uh, perspective. Um, you know, I mean, like I said, there's some big issues and one that I'm, it's not necessarily a campaign issue, it's not something people like to hear a lot about, but it's constitutional reform is probably the biggest issue of all, and I think it would make a big difference in our ability. State constitutional. Yes, yeah, state constitutional reform. Uh, it's something that the Oklahoma Council of Public Affairs talks a lot about. There's a lot of good uh, research on that, and uh, I think it's an issue that, uh, that people need to start talking about and, uh, and taking on. So. Uh, we don't have much time left. The U.S. Conference of Mayors is coming to Oklahoma City. I know you've been working on that kind of behind the scenes. Give, give the people an idea of, of what this event is. You've attended them, and, and mm -hmm. you're kind of uh, helping to, to kind of uh, um, uh, choreograph our, our event next year. Sure. Uh, as you said, the U.S. Conference of Mayors is an organization of mayors of cities above, I think, 30,000. Is mm -hmm. that right? And uh, hundreds of members, and they all get together every year. And when you get a group like that together, you're gonna to attract people like the president, you're gonna attract cabinet officials, you're gonna attract uh, other heads of state from other nations. And they meet every year, and they, in the last few years, they've gone to places like Los Angeles, Miami, Chicago, uh, Las Vegas, and of course, they're coming to Oklahoma City <laughs> <laughs> next summer in June, uh, which is shaping up to be a busy month uh, for me. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. June of 2010 is uh, when they're going to come, and that's going to be a huge deal. And I, I describe it as the biggest political event that's ever occurred in the state of Oklahoma. David Holt is his name. He's uh, my chief of staff and uh, a, a great political career ahead of you. David, thanks for coming on The Verdict. We appreciate it. Good it's luck to you. Yeah, honor. come Thank back you. again. Oh, well, of course. Thank you, Ken. Kent and I'll have a final word right after this. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life.
Bank first. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political government and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We've been visiting today with David Holt, a young man who grew up in Oklahoma City but has already had an, an array of life experiences, in, including uh, working for the Speaker of the House, Dennis Hastert, and the President of the United States, then back in Oklahoma for the Lieutenant Governor and now working for me in the Mayor's office. Well, it was uh, certainly enlightening for me. Uh, he has had an unbelievable breadth of experience for so few years in, uh, in being involved. Uh, it does, uh, it, I thought was uh, interesting as well, is how he, who is kind of a person behind the scenes mm -hmm. at your office, interacts with you and uh, Jim Couch, the people who are kind of out front to the public. And I don't know that our viewers, uh, or I for that uh, matter, have uh, had exposure mm -hmm. to him much before. It's interesting to see what he does and how he does it within your office. Yeah, you know, I don't know when uh, David Holt will think he has enough to write a book, but <laughs> a guy that was in the, in the, in the Capitol on the day of 9-11, a guy that... Uh, you know, was in the White House for some significant legislative, you know, time working for, for President Bush and came back and ran the president's re-election campaign in 2004 and, and then has been, at, at this point, at 30 years of age, he has worked at the municipal level, the state level, and the federal level and uh, now wants to be a candidate himself. Yes, he's now offered up his services to the uh, residents of District 30. Uh, in the Senate race that will be upcoming this next general election. It'll be interesting to see how he progresses in that endeavor. There is a website information on uh, David Holt's campaign. You can check it out. Uh, the web address is votedavidholt.com. And I also want to give the web address for our show because if you have an idea for a show or someone you'd like to, to see interviewed on The Verdict, all you need to do is go to the website and send us an email about that person and uh, perhaps how to get a hold of them if that's necessary. But that web address is theverdict.tv. Coming up next week, we'll have Dr. Mary Ann Bowman back. She comes back about annually to talk about the Women's Health Forum, and, but as always, a wealth of information. We look forward to her visit. Again, that's next week right here on The Verdict. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next week on that show. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.